Greetings, dear ones, I am. Cry out of magnetic service. There is a shift in this place. From just a moment ago to now, where so many of you are giving allowance for the impossible. You have to step aside your three-dimensional perceptions. Is it a man? Is it a man and an angel? What is it? Could it be that in this moment there is an entourage which you have allowed to come into this place to change the very energy around your seat? Or is it someone pretending? There are those here who don't believe it. They don't believe that this is taking place. They don't believe it is happening. And I would like to say what I always say. You, my dear friend, are not in judgment by God. You may think what you may think. And with free choice, the love for you is the same. It is the same. I know who you are tonight and I want to speak to the four of you who are not believing that this is taking place and I want you to search your souls just for a moment even though you don't believe it I'm going to ask you this what has really brought you here there is a seed being planted this entire day and in this moment a seed a tool if you want to know more you can't. A seed that's being planted that says, Dear one, dear shaman that you are and have been, there is a reason why you feel the way you feel. Two of you, of the four, have been here and done this many times. Two of you, of the four, have sat in a chair just like my partner and have addressed audiences just like he is. And you don't want any part of it. It didn't end well. It was difficult. And you come in with the karma of fear of enlightenment, and yet you're here. Go figure that out. And the other two, old souls that you are, you're just tired of it. And you don't want to do it again. And I'll say to you, you don't have to do it again. But would you consider being loved by God? Would you consider doing nothing just for a few minutes and letting God wash your feet? Would that be okay? And then when you get up, you don't have to tell anybody you changed. You don't have to tell anybody that you felt anything. It's just between you and me. Will you let yourself be loved? Because the rest are going to let that happen. What the entourage does when they come into a place like this is to soften you up. <laughs> if you've got a soft heart, you'll know this is real. I know who is here. Don't always say this because I don't always know this. Because the synchronicity is not always there to allow it. There are some of you who have loved and lost human beings very recently. And I would like to tell you, you've just given permission for them to show up. And they're here. They're here in the form that you'll want to see them here. And for a few moments in this transitional period, you're going to let them be with you and touch you, sit in your lap, perhaps even give you a message or two. There's a lot going on in here. There are those in this room who are the ancients of this area. You look in the mirror, your face is not an Indian face. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it was. And you're pulled back here. Feels good, doesn't it? We've said this before, you're your own ancients. Surely you know that. Guardians and stewards of the land. Even in modern times. Guardians and stewards of the land. 
and your children and your children's children will be as well. You may leave this plane and you may come back a different gender, <clears throat> a different race, and you'll be pulled back to the area and you'll do it again. Guardians and stewards of the land and you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Haven't you felt that? I'm not speaking to all of you. I'm speaking to those who have to hear this, who know I speak the truth. I look inside. I see the Akash. You know it too. It's an eclectic group that would come here. And if humans had the time to interview each other, you'd say, oh, wow, how very different we are. You'd say, the various places we've come from, and the places we were born, they're so vastly different. Five of you are from a different continent. And yet you're here, and you sit here. What brings you together in a time like this, in a place like this? And I will tell you this, family. What brings you together is the synchronicity that my partner was speaking of. It is not an accident that this group sits with one another. You have sat with each other before, in different places, in different time. You might even say some of you are the originators of human spirituality on planet Earth, and you know who you are as well. For you think out of the box. You think beyond being human. You think beyond even being a piece of God. You ask the questions. What is life? You understand that you are far grander than anyone knows. Oh, not as a human being, but as an entity of the universe. How many of you stop to think of the fact that if you are a piece of God, you always were and always will be? It is a circle of time without a break. That's a lot of time. You cannot conceive of something that always was. The human mind does not have the capability to conceive of something that had no beginning. Now, that's you. Four billion years ago, if you saw the earth, you wouldn't recognize it. But you were there. Four billion years before that, you wouldn't recognize space, but you were there. Four billion years before that, you would not have seen the universe, but you were there. And you have to ask, what else have I done that might be significant? <laughs> How about the very creation of this universe? What about the way the galaxies are placed? What about that dual black hole that is in the middle of your galaxy? Did you know you were there and had something to do with its placement? Gravity, magnetics, light. Science looks upon these things today and says there has to be a synchronicity. There must be intelligence. We're seeing something that could never have happened by chance. Intelligent design, they say, and they're right. What they don't know is that they are the intelligence behind it. <laughs> and so it is, dear ones, that you sit in a place like this. Old souls who don't know they're old. Pieces of God who really don't know that they are God. But with intuition, the rings that they are. Let this be a time of learning. I wish to address at this moment something that others may hear. It's not just for you who sit in the room. It's for all those who are listening. I see the listeners. I see the readers. 
In a quantum state, I am with the potentials that will occur, I am. Therefore, the potential of your eyes on the page, your ears in front of me, are known by me, dear one, dear soul, outside of the purview of this room, or any of the things that are here outside of the time frame of this room, I see you. And you've come to the right place, for I want to tell you something. Fear abounds. I speak now not just to those in the country where I sit. I speak to all of those whose ears will hear and eyes will read. There's a lot of fear. Fear is what the subject is tonight. <clears throat> Let us speak of it. Let us speak of it because it is uncertain, is it not, the times you are in. And so many of you are geared and stuck to what is before you of what you called financial. And that is shifting and that is changing. And you've seen the past and you don't know what the future is going to bring. And you're afraid. And it's understandable for it affects the way you live. The ability is for you to take care of your own families. What is going to happen next? Whether you're going to have a job or not. Whether you'll have your car or your house or not. And all these things seem material, but they generate fear. Let me be clear of this. You live in a society where these things work for you and are necessary for you to have. Spirit understands that you go to work. The exchange of your work and the remuneration that you receive buying the food, the heat, and the cooling. For you to move forward, for you to raise your children, for you to move forward just to be with one another requires these things in the society you're in. It is not materialistic for you to be part of the culture and survive within it. God sees this, honors the process, and knows who you are. And then things shift and they change. Seven years ago, and even later than that, I told you of these times. Even within this country, I spoke of the potential. The potential of you rearranging your very financial base due to integrity. And now you're in it. I give you information that my partners even spoke of before, and that is to say that these times, as hard as they are, are not going to last as long as those who predict these things are telling you. Because you have something that you cannot weigh, and that is hope. You have something which is intangible, that you really cannot then put into the equation. Perception. Expectation. Intuition. Drive. <laughs> All of these things are going to bring you to a conclusion faster than you expect. But meanwhile, there's fear. What is fear? You're going to have to hear this. You have to know this. For those who listen and those who read, perhaps even some in the room, might be gripped with it. Now, later, in circumstances that I cannot even fathom, that you will put yourself in fear. And you will consider fear to be a grand and great balancer of humanity. <laughs> and you're going to assign to it an energy. And you're wrong. Because I'm about to tell you what it is. Fear is the absence of God. That's what it is. It's a hole that you fall in. 
because you took away God. Every single human being has free choice to remove God from their life at any moment they wish and put it back. Nothing is permanent at all. Free choice is that way. Sometimes those who are just beginning to find that place of spirituality, of enlightenment, seesaw back and forth between understanding and darkness. There's nothing wrong with you if that's what's going on. For I'd like to say that those who find the light find it, dif they find it with difficulty for it is not your state of being. It becomes your state of being the more time you spend in the light. And then it is you and then it affects you and then you become it and you are the light. There's learning. Fear is not a power. Fear is the absence of a power. Well, cry then, how does it work that it feels so powerful? You come in with what we have called and always called free choice of dark and light and duality. These things which are fearful and dramatic and would unbalance a human being in a moment are always there. And as long as you're human, they're always there. Blessed is the human who fills themselves with the love of God. So much so that the jar is always full. And so that it's never empty and that thing which is duality of fear and unbalance and drama can never touch them. Because the jar is always full. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you want to know the answer how to get out of fear? I will go and do something I don't normally do. I'll actually give you some physical things you can do. But it's about connection. If your jar is filled, there won't be unbalance. Well, crying, I feel I'm a light worker and I have been for a long time, but sometimes I get, I'm afraid. Let me tell you how that works. I don't want you to blame yourself, dear human being. This is so typical that that jar every so often goes into unbalance and it gets tipped a little bit and out flows the love of God and so it's a little empty and it flows the darkness of the emptiness of the void and there's unbalance and there's drama and there's fear and there's panic because you don't have what you're used to. What do you do? I'll tell you this, you just turn on the spigot and fill it up fast. From the source which is always full. That's what's hard with a human being. That's what's difficult. There's a human being in this room who has been channeling. And the entity he's been channeling, he thinks he's left. Dear one, my partner looked right at you and told you the truth. The love of God has increased in your life. You have melded with this energy. Change the station. It'll be back. It'll be back in a different way. It'll flow in a different way. It'll feel like you, and it won't be. It's going to be the two of you. You should know, dear sir, that you've passed the tests. And that the love of God is with you. Do not fear what has happened. No one has left you. You had to know that. But it's easy to go into fear. What has gone wrong? And some of you go there when you feel a shift. Not understanding what I've just said to the one who is here. When you go into shift, things feel different. Sometimes that jar gets tipped a little bit. Sometimes the love pours out. Sometimes there's a hole, a little hole. And in that void, there's unbalance, there's fear, there's drama. Are you going to let it take you over or are you going to fill up the glass again? Here's some advice. Some steps, if you wish. We seldom give steps. These are 3D steps because God does not want you in fear. 
Number one, immerse yourself with the love of God. Immerse yourself in the love of God. Visualize, if you have to, swimming in the pool with the angels and with spirit, with universal truth, swimming so much that you'll never be dry, you'll always be wet. Wet with the love of God. Immerse yourself with the love of God. Let nothing take you from that immersion, no matter where you go, no matter what happens to you, no matter where you are. Stay immersed. There are those who would feel that that kind of thing would only be for meditation, for points where you would be spiritual. You learn this in this society, that there is a day where you worship and the other days where you don't. <laughs> How 3D of you. <laughs> you always worship. You're always immersed with the love of God. You worship the idea that you're God. You sing songs to the fact that you're never alone. That's step one. Step two, count on the innate. And this means that at the cellular level, all of your cells know better. It's your intellect that tells you you're in trouble. Your cells know better. Ask your cellular structure. If you're one who talks to your cells and you believe in things like kinesiology, you believe in those things where there is innate intelligence within your cellular structure, use it. Ask it if you're in trouble. And it'll tell you that you're a piece of God. And that you don't have to worry. And though you may not know the potentials of what is before you, whatever is before you is okay. You're not here to suffer. Did you hear me? You're not here to suffer. That's not the plan. The plan is to put integrity in banking. That is the plan. <laughs> and in the process, you will survive. You will. Crying, why should God care about banking? <laughs> That's not hard. It's a part of your culture. And what you would call, it greases the wheels of your reality. And there has to be integrity there. Again, we say these things so that you can have the warmth and the stability. You can get to the places you need to get to. You can feel comforted. You can feel self-assured. You can feel that you're creating your own reality and banking is part of it. It must be. There are so many things you might think, well, God is not interested in those things. God is interested in the integrity of those things. And that's what you've done. You moved it, didn't you? Right off of the peg of where it was, didn't you? Don't fear it. That was number two. Number three, beat up your intellect. <laughs> Don't let it get control. Oh, there's a place for the intellect, and it's not in your spiritual life. There is a place for the intellect. This is the human's ability to think high, to think free, to think beyond the things that you're supposed to think about, to even think about life itself, the meaning of who you are. But don't let it talk you out of the love of God. Beat it up if you have to. For if you don't, it'll take over and it'll tell you there's a reason to be afraid. <laughs> it'll give you the ABCs of banking. <laughs> and if that's not enough, all you have to do is turn on your TV and they'll give you the rest. <laughs> God is not in a vacuum on these things. God knows what you do every day what you think, where you go, 
how you posture your love of others, your judgments, what your goals are, what your dreams are, what your pleasures are, what your fears are. And that's why I can talk to you this way, brother, sister, because I live life with you. I'm a piece of God. And so are you. We're allied forever. That was number three. Number four. Love yourself. Mother yourself. Call upon the inner child. All of these things that you need to do. In order to get into a place that is comfortable. Like an old shoe. If you need to. To know that you're all right. There's nothing like the inner child. It often responds to a time when the human beings had no worries at all. Do you remember that time? Then claim it and take it and be it and do it. It works. All of these hints. Here's some actions you can take. Just a couple. If you find yourself surrounded in fear and none of these other things are working and they're a little too esoteric, call on your friends. Call on your friends, the ones who aren't in fear. It's catchy, you know. It's catchy in both ways. The light is catchy. That is to say, when you're surrounded by those with joy and in light who are not afraid, it fills up your jar. <laughs> Now let me ask you this, dear human being, are you afraid today? Is your jar full? Then you're a friend, aren't you? How will you feel when you get the call that someone else is in trouble? Will you listen and say, I send you light? Or will you say, let me come over to your house? Let me stand next to you and hold your hand. How many of you will do that? Does it break a paradigm that's comfortable for you? Well, let me tell you something. Times are different. And maybe, just maybe, that's what you ought to do. Free choice. But when you're holding light and someone else is not and they're reaching out to you, I'll tell you this, you can fill their jar. And you don't have to give them the reasons. And you don't have to save them from themselves. All you have to do is stand with them. And your light shines onto theirs. And their consciousness begins to relax. And later they'll say, thank you for saving me. If it weren't for you, I don't know what I would have done. That's who you are. Are those listening who needed to hear that? Truly you did. The second action item, get out of your normal groove. If you find yourself in fear, Go places you wouldn't normally go. Do things you wouldn't normally do. It's going to change your perception. It's going to give you synchronicity that you cannot plan on. It's going to put you in places you wouldn't have been. And that is valuable. It gives a human being's brain a variety to choose from. It changes the status quo. It takes you out of the dump that you're in that is the void of fear. For that dump that you're in that's the void of fear counts on everything being the same for it to work. That's the hardest thing a person's gonna do is in fear, it was in depression, and that is to get out of the house because everything in them says, I gotta stay put and walk through it. And you don't, get up. Change the groove you're in, move around, and do something different. I seldom give human beings action items like this, and I'm giving you some of the best. <laughs> and the final one. Some of you aren't going to understand this. What's real to you? The love of God should be real to you. Nothing else. So this is a big one. Thumb your nose in reality. <laughs> Dare it to change your life. 
and know that it can't because you create the reality that you're in. You have the rudder in your hand and it has no control over you and you can thumb your nose at it. And you might say, well, yeah, crying, but you don't know the, the trouble I'm in. Oh, yes, I do. And it shouts for you to love God, and it shouts for you to change your groove, and it shouts for you to thumb your nose at what is around you that looks so awful, that's so horrible. It's a paper type because you're a piece of God. That's the lesson for today. Could it be clearer? <laughs> you stand in a time and a place that even spirit did not prophesy. Dear human being, you've shifted the reality of your planet. You are steering it to a place that is so potentially poignant with peace. And you're going to work this puzzle, this lifetime and the next. No, you didn't want to hear that, did you? But you are. That's what you do. That's why you came. There are seniors here who will come into their next lifetime. Even while my partner is still alive. as indigos, new consciousness children. Beautiful it is, the system that is here. Beautiful it is. What you've done with the planet, there has never been a time since I have come onto this place you call Earth with my partner where there is more potential for light. It's hard for us to leave, hard for us to pick up the bowls of the tears that we have when we wash your feet. It's hard to leave. This is a dispensation you have allowed in these times where spirit can talk to you personally, one on one, and we have. And the four who don't believe it, you can awaken now. <laughs> and walk out with the same number of angels everyone else does. A piece of God you are, even if you don't believe it. And so it is. <laughs>